Thank you very much, Randy. And we go right back to our callers. Next up is Kathy, listening in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Sirius XM 131. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Hank. How are you? I I'm well, thank you. Oh, good. Can you hear me okay? You sound wonderful. Oh, good. I have you on speakerphone because I wanted to record the your answer. Sure. Anyway, um, I had a friend over the other day, and he was asking, why aren't there 12 uh, Gospels? Um in the Bible, why are there only four? And my best answer to him was, I don't know, but it seems to me they probably were not all literate and capable of writing down the, the gospel. Well, you know, I, I, I like how you answered the question by saying, I don't know. Uh, here's what I think, but I, I, I don't know. And I think we can all learn from that. Uh, there are so many times when I'm asked questions, I simply don't know what the answer is, but I can research and return, and in the process, I become an ever more useful tool in the hands of the Holy Spirit. So good for you. But th th there's a couple of things going on. There are many, many different Gospels. There's the Gospel of Thomas. There's the Gospel of Judas. Uh, there's the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Lots of Gospels. But they're late Gospels, and they're clearly not in harmony with logical truth propositions and oftentimes not with biblical principles. For example, you read the Gospel of Thomas, and Jesus and Peter are having a conversation, and Peter is telling Jesus, make Mary leave us because women don't inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus replies, well, look, I'll turn her into a man so she can inherit the kingdom of God like you men. So there's a, a very strong disjuncture between that gospel and its teachings and what was taught by Jesus Christ as verifiable through both external as well as internal sources. Uh, so the, the, the credible Gospels are of early composition, and therefore they're not subject to legendary, uh, legendary uh, uh, corruption, uh, not uh, subject to the Gnostic ideas that I were just communicating, as is the case with the, uh, the Gospel of Thomas. Or you read the Gospel of Judas. If you read it, you will be in stitches. It's actually 13 papyrus pages, doesn't take very long to read, but it's hilarious. Uh, in some ways, like reading the Quran, it's discombobulated, it's toilsome, but it's also humorous because it's self-stultifying. What you have with the Gospels that are not determined by men, but only discovered by men based on principles, like the principle of perspicuity, which is to say that it has internal cohesion and it is a commensurate uh, and can be coordinated with the rest uh, of the Gospels. And, and, and the rest of the Gospels that are early eyewitness accounts are given to us as four so that you have various perspectives on the same account. It's like seeing an accident. Uh, four people see it, and they see different things. And together, they give you a composite picture of what really took place. Uh, and, and this is what you have in the in the gospel accounts. You have the synoptics, uh, and, and, and then you have John. And when you take them together, uh, you have coordination, uh, but you don't have collusion. And so together they form a concise and systematic uh, picture of the life and teachings of our Lord and Jesus Christ during his earthly three-year ministry, including, of course, the very beginning when he was born, and, uh, and, and then his crucifixion and ascension and resurrection. 